is in the game. You know, how many times, too, over the years have we seen Beheim be almost happy if somebody throws in a few long threes on him <laughs> yeah, early in the game? Yeah. And you saw at the end of the game, Cincinnati was struggling a little bit from behind <laughs> the arc. Well, Towson's been struggling inside, outside the arc, everywhere else. Towson has now lost 40 in a row after falling to Delaware, 62-43. Towson and Binghamton, the only two teams in college basketball without a win. Kansas and Texas A&M coming up in a matter of moments. What are you looking for tonight, Hubert, with the Jayhawks and Aggies? Well, uh, Texas A&M is, is a talented basketball team. They can get after it defensively, but on the offensive end, they need to score. Chris Middleton is the guy that can create his own shot. He has to have a big game for Texas A&M to have a chance, Coach. Tyshawn Taylor. Thomas Robinson. <laughs> That's all you got to say about Kansas. It's a pretty good one-two punch Ooh, last week on Big Monday against oh. Baylor for sure when they knocked the Bears from the ranks of the unbeaten. Now a different kind of challenge. A&M has been struggling a bit. Kansas on a roll. We'll take you out to Lawrence right now. Allen Fieldhouse, one of the superb venues in college basketball, is home to perhaps its best one-two punch. Player of the year candidate Thomas Robinson averages a double-double inside. While on the perimeter, Tyshawn Taylor is coming off perhaps the best stretch of his Kansas career. The number five Jayhawks play host to Texas A&M next on Big Monday. Welcome to ESPN's Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. And tonight, the Texas A&M Aggies ride into Lawrence, Kansas, to take on the number five team in the nation, the Kansas Jayhawks. The Jayhawks unbeaten here in their historic home, and another sellout crowd on hand. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for dropping by with the coach, Bob Knight. I'm Brett Musburger. Nice to have you along with us. Coach Knight, I know you're impressed with this Jayhawk team again this year. The Aggies aren't riding as big a horses as the Jayhawks, <laughs> as the Jayhawks are. Now, with Kansas, as you mentioned earlier, they're the fifth-ranked team in the country, but I'll guarantee you that they're as good as any of the other four. And they've had some up and downs with Taylor, and I think the downs are thought about a little bit and talked about a little bit too much because that kid with his size and his strength is all anybody can handle coming from the guard spot. And he's just had three really good games. Um, Robinson, uh, Dick Vitale has cast 4,739 votes for Robinson as a player of the year already. <laughs> Bob, I'm going to take everybody through the good and the bad of Tyshawn Taylor just to get you up to date. Because there are times when Tyshawn, as you know, is a little bit out of control. No question. Like there, he's trying to make a pass right through the defensive hands. You can't do it. Uh, he takes some chances on passes. The, and, and here was a good shot that he hit. Great pass. Watch this pass. And he is really good at seeing people. But he has such confidence in himself that sometimes he doesn't see the defensive man in position to stop the pass. So this the last three games, as Bob pointed out, perhaps the best stretch of his career here at Kansas. And of course, you know the relationship, point guard and coach. He could go back and forth. And there is a great quote from Bill Self on his mercurial guard. Holly Rowe has more on the relationship between Self and Tyshawn Taylor. Well, I've seen Bill Self kick Tyshawn off the floor at practice for not guarding. I've seen him get suspended for not practicing hard enough. Guys, it's been an up and down career in that respect. But Bill Self told me if you wanted to build the perfect guard, it would be Tyshawn Taylor. He's got terrific length at 6'3". He's got the wingspan of 6'7". He can guard. He's got a terrific speed that people just can't guard going to the hole. And when he wants to, he'll defend. He's leading this team in scoring in Big 12 conference games at 19 points a game. They just hope the good Tyshawn continues the rest of this season. All right, Holly, and we have a late-breaking story regarding the Texas A&M Aggies. Chris Middleton, one of their leading scorers, out tonight. He re-injured the knee in the Oklahoma game early and logged only about 12 minutes, so he is not available tonight. So the starting lineup will include Najee Hibbert, a 6'5 junior guard from Baltimore. He'll be starting his first game this year and only his second career start overall. Dash Harris is the one in charge. He has to keep an eye on Tyshawn Taylor. 
For the Jayhawks, of course, we have mentioned Robinson, and he is one of the leading candidates for Player of the Year. But keep an eye on number five, Jeff Withy, the seven-foot center. So we are ready to go. John Higgins will toss it up. David Hall and Tom Eads will work with him. And Hibbert on his first play is fouled by Johnson coming to the hoop as he stole it and he works his way to the free throw line here early. One way for an underdog as you know Bob to stay in and get on that free throw line. Well and you mentioned the fact that Middleton wasn't able to play in this game tonight. Middleton has a real bearing on the inside play with Turner and the rest of the guys they have inside and because he keeps things loosened up a little bit more on the outside Middleton is a real loss for this team. He is talking to Courtney Robertson, who is also out. And both, of course, are expected back. In fact, the Aggies were telling us that they think that Middleton may be able to play over the weekend. Robertson will not. He's there to the, to the right as you look at it. And Middleton due to return. And Robertson is going to be at least another couple of weeks. Now let's watch the Jayhawk. Offenses they survived that trip to the free throw line. There is Tyshawn what he can do What Kansas does better than anybody Brent is use the entire width of the floor There's 50 feet there and they use it all just like there. They started right Reversed it quickly and Taylor had a step on the man going to the bucket Traveling is the call against the Aggies and they turn it over here here we're going to see the re there goes Taylor move he has up high we've talked a lot Brent and I have about keeping the offense up off the baseline and they do a good job of that too. So here comes Taylor now to set the table for the number five team in the new rankings that came out today. Missouri also the Big 12 has jumped to number two. Taylor will shoot the three, and he has all five of the Jayhawk points here in the early going. Now, one thing Taylor has to do that he does a little bit uh, in the negative sense, Brent. That's Bumford on the steal. Go ahead, back to When he gets started well, he relaxes a little bit. So he's had this great start. Let's see if he can maintain it. The crowd alive. The Jayhawks rocking early. Aggies searching for scores. Hibbert hits the front of the iron, and there's your leading rebounder in the Big 12, Robinson. Robinson has great moves on the offensive glass as well as the defensive glass. Withy couldn't finish, but he gets it back. And the foul is going to be called as he was moving across to secure that rebound. But there's one of the most improved players in the Big 12, and here's Billy Kennedy, first year as the Aggie coach. Robinson just doesn't rely on his size and strength Brett on the offensive glass. He's very quick He moves he fakes one way comes the other he blocks out extremely well on the defensive glass One word would describe the Aggie season so far in the big world disappointed Coaches have been tabbed as a co-favorite along with the Jayhawks and they have not lived up to that by any stretch of the imagination you know, the thing I always question about that is who tabbed them as a leading candidate? Some guy. The coaches. Well, they don't know either. Well, you <laughs> used to know, didn't you? I never Come on, did. you were a coach. No, no, I never picked those things because I didn't know enough. Yeah, you about turned it, it over to the SID. <laughs> <laughs> Seven nothing. Well, you, you, talk, you talked me out of getting a real good shot at the press there. No, you're too, I know. You're too, I, I you're know. too sharp for me. <laughs> Now, they'll, now there they kept it going across the court, but they'll still come back with it. Now here's Withy backing in, makes contact, and underneath was Robinson. It'll be Jayhawk basketball. Boy, these two, as you look ahead to March, Bob, with Withy's improvement and Robinson's ability to move for rebounds, they are going to be tough to deal with down low. It's going to be a very, very difficult high-low situation to defend or double post to defend either one. Withy has got a great, great range with his with his strength and his length. Now the Aggies scoreless here in the early minutes, just looking for some kind of firepower. And you know we showed you Coach Billy Kennedy. His philosophy has always been 
pull the trigger the first seven seconds and then reset if you don't get it. And this is not a high scoring team that he inherited. They turn it over again. That's four. Robinson coming inside. Missed the layup, however. But battles for the loose ball. Going for it's off Harris. Kansas, Kansas isn't just a really good offensive team. They play defense very well. We have yet to see AM get a really good crack at an open shot or a uh, drive to the bucket. They've helped well. They move well. They have tremendous quickness on the defensive end. Dash Harris will bring it down. Takes the inbound pass for number 10 LeBeau. They got to get LeBeau involved in the offense. He's the best scorer they have out on the floor. He's got to get some things done for them out there. Harris looks in. LeBeau's over on the right side of the block. And a foul is going to be called. I believe it's against Robinson. Yes, it is. He may have reached in and gotten a piece of him, but that was an example of how quick Robinson is. There's a ball screen set. Now watch how Robinson comes right there. And he's that quick, and he got a hand on the ball. Uh, they do a very good job of taking away the ball screen. The ball screen has become so much a part of everybody's offense that when it's taken away from them, they're not really sure what to do. Well, it's a struggle. Kansas has worked very hard at defending the ball screen. LeBeau just stayed with it. And Turner in underneath commits the personal foul. So it's on Ray Turner. The Yankees have been able to find only two shots, Bob. Missed them both. Jayhawks, meanwhile, three of six here in the early going. Well, and if they would have gotten that uh, when Robinson was inside, if they'd have gotten a bucket there and another, and if they get in double figures without AM getting the point. I think we got a hold in the post on turn. Did he pick up two quick ones? Now Ray Turner down low, and that is his, his second at either end. Robinson coming back again, stayed with his miss. Got very, very quick reaction. Look at the steal by Taylor. Back to Robinson. And wanted Tehan, who had checked in off the bench and throws it out of bounds, much to coach self dismay. And he's clutching the needs over there on the sideline. If we'll take a break. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And in part by KFC Hot Wings. Taste so good they don't need sauce. Kansas pitching a shutout here in the first five minutes and want to remind you that Super Tuesday features Big Ten and SE College Hoops tomorrow. First at 7 Eastern the Michigan Wolverines visit Purdue then at 9 Eastern Kentucky takes on Georgia Super Tuesday presented by KFC on ESPN It's a stream live on watch ESPN .com. Take a look at the uh, Big Ten standings. We all realize that Ohio State's the class of it. But uh, Bob, what about some of those other teams that are chasing them, the uh, Spartans, Wolverines, and Badgers there? Well, here's what I think, Brent. I think there are half a dozen teams in the middle part of the Big Ten that are relatively equal. I think Ohio State playing as well as it can play is better than anybody else. But that being said, in this league, when we compare Kansas and Missouri to anybody in the Big Ten, there really is no comparison in terms of athletic ability right now. Here's Hibbert handling the ball for the Aggies approaching the five minute mark without a point. And remember they started the game on the free throw line. You can watch the Kansas players in action and they really want to be good defensively. They work at being good defensively. They don't give up a lot of easy stuff. Shot clock down inside 10 and the foul is going to be called and it is on Taylor. That's his first personal. Well, there's the field goal defense, sixth in the NCAA. 
They've been up there five of the last six seasons, so it is something that Coach Self and his staff preach daily. You know, and it comes about because the kids buy into it. The kids see that they hold the other team down. They get some offensive buckets out of steals and slaps away. Uh, then they really take a lot of pride in their defense. This team does that. They come to help really well. They move well. Still they can't score. Block out well. They did all of that right there. And LeBeau couldn't get his own miss. Sheehan pulls the trigger, smooth jumper, it's a two, and it's 11 nothing. and the Aggies are inside of 14 and a half, finally. They roll down with Elston Turner, the junior guard from Sacramento, with their first field goal. Kansas has another really good quality, too. They've got great depth. And uh, there we saw not what was a particularly good pass, but Wesley can come in and take a couple minutes here and there uh, away from the other two big kids. So they really have three people they can rotate around in the post. They're always going to be fresh defensively. They're not going to be in the last 10 minutes of the game where they're tired because they've been able to uh, work people into the lineup. They've got people with good legs at the end. Wesley, whom you mentioned, coach, is 6'9", sophomore out of Fort Worth, Texas. Turner off the iron, one end, done. Tyshawn brings it back out now to set the floor. Relaford back on the floor, Withy with a high screen for him. And Taylor off the ball fake, steps inside and knocks down the jail. What a smooth looking player he has become. You know, that ball fake got the defensive man up in the air and gave him an opening going toward the middle where no one was contesting the shot. It is such a struggle here at the offensive end for the Aggies. Hibbert runs into Wilson, gets eaten alive. Steal on the outlet. Here's Harris. Back from the corner, and the three ball is drained. So Hibbert, with his first points of the evening, 13-5, 13-minute mark. Relaford back at him. With the, with the offensive rebound, Tehan can't put it down. Now let's see if the Aggies can put together hoops. With is a real addition to this operation, uh, Fred. I think that uh, he's going to just continue to improve and improve. And for that, Coach, I want to give assistant Danny Manning some credit. He has worked long and hard in practice, going over things that a big man has to learn. And of course, Danny was a great, great star here at Kansas, led him to a national championship. And now Turner knocks down the three. So Elston Turner. And it's 13-5, and he has five points. When they come off that ball screen with the, the guy defending the screener has really got to get into the shooter quick, and he didn't do it there. He gave Turner just too much room. Here's Withy backing into the paint. Fouled, and he'll come to the free throw line. Now, one of the things that impresses me about Withy, Coach, big men who can shoot free throws, and this young man can shoot free throws. So when they foul to put him on the line, and we're going to see an example of it when we come back. Also, we want to talk about uh, Coach Knight with the uh, big man skills. So coming up, we're going to have night vision, and Coach is going to take you through some of the things that separate the outstanding big men when you come back. So a little burst by the Aggies, and now they trail 13-8 here at the 11-57 mark, and we're going to turn our attention to night vision, and tonight's lesson is about big men and uh, the skills they develop, Coach. We're going to use Robinson as an example here just to show you what all a postman can do, particularly on the offense. There, he makes a little fake baseline, spins back to what is his left shoulder. Now, the offensive postman has got to be able to go to both shoulders, step out. He doesn't have to shoot threes, but he's got to go out to 15 feet. 
puts the ball on the floor and goes to his left. So he's shown his left hand, right hand, little outside shooting, the block out, and he gets the thing going defensively. Now, the offensive board. He is very tough to keep off the board. And here he moves to a help position and gets a block without a foul. And that in itself is a difficult play. Now, speaking of another skill, the Jayhawks coming to the free throw line for the first time tonight. And coach, we talked about Jeff Withy. He's 16 of 19 this year. That's 84% from the free throw line. As a team, the Jayhawks shoot. 65. So here is with me, and that's good looking for him. Well, you know that we were talking at the break a little bit, Brett, you and I, about the fact that when Withy gets a ball, he shouldn't be looking to be a passer. He should be looking to be a scorer. And you brought up the fact that he's such a good free throw shooter. Absolutely. And when he gets it, he's got that great length. Uh, he's got to move, be a little higher off the baseline so he can go both ways. But I think you'd want Withy trying to score every time he got the ball inside. You know, Thomas Robinson is certainly a legitimate candidate for player of the year. But if they're going to go far into March, Withy could wind up being one of the most valuable players. He's going to be a tough matchup when the tournament time comes. Here is Harris jumping it over with the influence of shot, but not enough. And the Aggies are able to finish with Keith Davis, his first points of the night. That's one of the few times, at least maybe the first time in this game, we've seen Kansas beat one on one from the perimeter. Now they'll look to reverse it if they can and then go into the post. Badly missing on that little pull up shot of Robinson's. Harris again presses the issue. And Turner misses on the three ball. And here is Robinson with still another rebound. Lob got it in too far. Stolen by the Aggies. Five turnovers for the Jayhawks. Spot up three and knocked down beautifully over there by Daniel Alexander, a freshman from Austin, Texas. And look what we found. Well, you know, they got the two threes that he's hit out there, and with he's been a little bit slow getting there. It was 11 nothing, and the Aggies now have gone on a 13 4 run. Here is that last three, Bob, that you were talking about coming up. Okay, they don't get out to the corner quick enough. Withy didn't have anybody there. He has to be cheating toward the shooter and just didn't. Now we're going to have an a a and m zone here. Tehan and it rims out. And now the Aggies are attempting to keep it going. And Harris presses it. Here's Alexander again. He was looking for the shot. Jay from the baseline knocked back down by Elston Turner. And the Aggies have tied this game. Turner made a great, great back cut right there. Really good. It ended up with that basket. Here's Tehan off the iron battle. All right, now Tehan has touched the ball twice since he came in and shot both times. What the energy the Aggies suddenly had. How about this Alexander nailing a second three over there? We said, where are they going to find their shooters? Well, here's a youngster, a freshman out of Austin, and he's knocked down two trays. You know, one of the things that's involved in this situation right now where Kansas finds themselves is too big a lead too early. This looks like it's going to be too easy for us, and they've really just kind of let up. They're not nearly as attentive and as aggressive defensively as they were getting that 13 or 11 to nothing lead. Taylor's three ball knocks it at 18. Inside of 10 minutes here at the first half. This is Kinsley. And you can just see the confidence that the Aggies have displayed here the last few minutes. Harris takes it in and he travels. Well, it's amazing, Bob, what a couple of great shots will do for a basketball game. Well, no question. And, and what a great move that was. He mentioned that one earlier on the back cut and then getting open. Now that's the second shot that the kid has hit from the corner where people have just been late going out on it. I really, I think Kansas just kind of relaxed. You know, some of the things that you, one of the things you have to come over, Brent, as a coach, is human nature. Your kids get to relax a little bit because they've got a good, and boy, is that tough. Taylor 
kick it back outside. And it's going to go over as he worked down that baseline. That is on Taylor. That's his second personal foul here in the first half, and they're going to they're going to sit him. Tyshawn's going to go out. T Ham's in now. Now the Aggies will see if they can take a lead. That was a great defensive move by Elston Turner on Taylor down there drawing the charge. Took the baseline completely away from him. Spin move knocked away and a foul is going to be called on the Jayhawks. Turner came back with a really difficult move to defend and then made a little shot fake and that's why he's on the line right now. There, this is a totally different. Uh, it's like there was a timeout, and they sent these guys out and brought in five new guys. That, that uh, I agree. Out of the church league or something, because what a turnaround! Pretty good church league. <laughs> <laughs> was it was a Methodist league? <laughs> Is their first lead 1918 that came at the 826 mark after they were down 11 nothing and they are playing tonight without Chris Middleton we, we could never beat St. Agnes our Catholic Church in the summer slow pitch league right? <laughs> we, we Methodists always finish second, second that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, TN made a pass that time as I said as soon as he got in the game, he shot the ball twice, and that's not what you want a guy doing coming off the bench. Get involved in the game a little bit. Handle the ball, get rid of it, uh, play a little defense, and then look to take a shot. Johnson will take it out of bounds for the Jayhawks. Here's T. Han again. Rutherford. Robinson and Withy are down low. They're not going to the ball in the post as much as I thought they would. AM did a great job shutting off the baseline. And Tehan regains the lead. He now has five. And when the baseline was shut off, that was a great pass made to Tehan. Now LeBeau joins the party from the right baseline. That's his first hoop of the night that ties it at 21. LeBeau's got the score for them to be effective. Johnson off the iron. So their last three shots have been three balls. And they passed up the big bodies down on the inside. Coach has probably got a point that Bill Self and the crew will emphasize they got to get the ball in. And there's LeBeau with that smooth J deadlocked at 21. Who would have believed it? I'm Reese Davis, Sports Center right now, presented by Sprint. Chip Kelly's going to stick around Eugene, continue to coach the Oregon Ducks. They're turning down an offer to become the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's been a head coach for three years, a little more experience. There'll be a lot of opportunities for him. Syracuse back on the winning side after falling to Notre Dame over the weekend. Chris Joseph had 17. His Bayheim's team beat Cincy 60 to 53. Sports Center currently on ESPN News. And here, Texas A&M and Kansas are tied at 21. After Bill Self's Jayhawks went out to an 11-point lead, and uh, Holly, what did Bill have to say over there in the huddle during the timeout? Well, he was frustrated, as you can imagine. He's very upset that they are shooting 53%. He yelled at his guys and said, "53% in our building? Have some pride." He said, "Everybody needs to quit worrying about themselves and do what we do." He told Thomas Robinson to get more involved and shoot more, but his basic point was, "Let's run our stuff." Well, we've got a foul called against the Aggies. Daniel Alexander just picked up his first of the game at the seven-minute mark. When I saw A&M play Missouri, they kind of went dead at the end of the first half and again at the end of the game. Let's see if they can just maintain it for the whole 20 minutes here. Rolliford penetrates with the dribble. And knocks down the jumper. Yeah, 
high screen. Green looks in for the Aggies, and he travels. Good call. Always wanted to see, and I tried to watch officials during a game, if when the ball was received by a player in position to drive it, are they watching that player's feet? And, and he is really, really, Eads is a very, very good official. And, and uh, it was obvious that he was watching feet. That's the seventh turnover for the Aggies here today. And now the Jayhawks give it right back. And that's the seventh turnover for the Jayhawks. They don't have any statistical edge whatsoever over AM, and that's why the game is as close as it is. Starting out, within five minutes, they had every statistical edge. Relaford Gamble couldn't get there. Here comes Dash Harris. First shot of the game, couldn't make it, but LeBeau with an offensive rebound, left hand. Well, you got to give AM an awful lot of credit for I'd coming say. back like they have. The kids have really fought. There have been some poor play on the part of Kansas. I think they've rattled the Jayhawks a little bit with this. Well, I think once they got that lead, Kansas getting that lead, then they thought the rest of the evening was going to be like that. Now they're a little bit confused how they got into this uh, this tie. LeBeau fouled Robinson. Now watch, uh, watch, watch number ten here. Watch LeBeau. Good little fake there. Just, just enough to take the attention away from the defender trying to make the block. When is he? And then all of a sudden he was able to get up. So that gave him a split second edge with that little fake. You know, one of the things I noticed about Coach Kennedy when we were doing the Missouri game, he continually substituted. He runs players in and out of that floor. He's given a lot of youngsters on this Aggie team a chance to show what they can do. And Alexander, for example, I don't remember him doing much against Missouri, but he's contributed greatly here. Johnson fires away. Kansas uh, really trying to live by this three ball. But Johnson isn't, isn't afraid to take the shot. I believe Johnson's coming out of the game for not being afraid to take the shot. There's LeBeau that jump step again and one. And he's back on the free throw. You made the point in the Missouri game and again here tonight that for the Aggies to be successful, number 10 has to step it up, and he's doing that right here, Bob. Well, I think it's very important. LeBeau scoring, LeBeau being a threat inside and outset is really important. Now, there was a classical example of the help defense not shutting off the move to the bucket. When the pass is on the way to a postman, there is a defensive help man there, and he has got to move to take away any opportunity the guy catching the ball has of getting to the bucket. It's going to cost AM three points here. They just that seven points now for David LeBeau here. R rather, it got AM three points because that defensive help wasn't there. What a steal Steve right Dash there. Coming back, left hand, lays it in. Aggies on fire. A five point lead. Folks, this is a three touchdown underdog I'm talking about, and I'm not kidding. So we welcome you back. College Hoops on Wednesday. 7 Eastern, Philadelphia face Big East foe Louisville. 9 Eastern, Duke will visit ACC rival Maryland. The coach, Bob Knight, will go up there and straighten Mike Krzyzewski out <laughs> after that last second loss at the hands of the Knowles. Well, here we go, Bob. 28 to 12. The Aggies have outscored the Jayhawks since trailing 11 nothing. Remarkable. Well, now they're moving back to his zone. The two shots that Johnson took were ridiculous. Coming into the game like he did without moving the ball. And then as soon as he got it back after the first miss, he took another. Now it's Relaford. And Young underneath for an offensive rebound puts it back. So Kevin Young, the junior guard, had checked in. And he contributes to the Aggies. Forgot to block him off the glass. A&M has pretty good patience. They keep the ball away from the defense. They look for opportunities. They've done a good job getting the foul line. Harris has done a good job here tonight, Bobby. Has not been out of control. The ball blocked by Whitley. The rejection. 
Now that was help defense at its best. Withy came across as LeBeau was making the move. Withy was in position. Now here he's got to look to score. Relaford steps inside. There's Withy. Just what you wanted. Catch and go. Catch it and go to the bucket. And when he caught the ball in the first of that sequence, he's got to make a little move to the middle and get the shot. And here, as you said earlier, he's on the free throw line and he's going to hit a free throw. Such a good shooter, three point play. I'm Reese Davis coming up in the UPS halftime report. Syracuse got off to a slow start against Cincinnati. We'll show you how the Orange Jim Beheim bounced back in an impressive fashion. And also, Kentucky's freak freshman, a shot blocking machine, Anthony Davis, the subject of our court vision. Hubert and Digger join me. We'll see you in a bit, Brent. All right, Reese, thank you very much. And here, of course, the Aggies have battled back into it, lead it by a point with 344 to go. Jeff Withy with a chance to tie it. He's already made his first two free throws. Leading free throw shooter on this Jayhawk team. A beautiful stroke. Withy just has to become more aggressive with the ball inside. The more aggressive he is, the more free throws he's going to shoot. Tyshawn Taylor back on the floor here for the last 344. He's watching Harris. Kansas more aggressive on the outside shooter. There's Whitty with another rejection, knocking it out, and Rutherford brings it to the attack. You know, Whitty had his hands in perfect position. He didn't have to make any movement with his hands that might lead to a foul. That was a great block. And he's screening out high for teammates. And he goes out of bounds. It'll be Jayhawk ball with 18. But Whitty came out and screened twice out here high. Okay, first of all, we're going to see a situation here with help. Here comes with the over. He's already in position. He gets a crack at the ball without making the foul. And here's another situation. Okay, we're and back to play yeah, now. Live. Johnson saved that from going into the backcourt on that inbounds pass. Johnson, the young man from Las Vegas. Rutherford is cut off for the left baseline. And here is Ruthie backing down. Long jump hook. And Harris rebounds it. Want to get with you a little bit higher on the lane so he can come back to the middle. Here comes Alexander. He's contributed. And with the is out very tight this time. Did Just what you said. And he jumped out on it. Did a really good job going out on Alexander that time. Really good. Yeah, he recognizes Alexander can shoot. And there he's bogged down in the corner again by. The Jayhawks not giving him so Dash Harris battle for the rebound. Jayhawks have got it. Here comes Johnson. Looking for the lead now at the two minute mark here of the first half. Off the iron, missing another three is Johnson. I'm really surprised at the number of outside shots they've taken quickly. You know, that outside shot is always going to be there. And if you take it in the first 10 seconds of the possession, you virtually eliminate the idea of getting to the free throw line. Elijah's 0 of 5 shooting the three here tonight, too. I want to remind you that on Super Tuesday, we've talked about the Big Ten, and that'll be one of our matchups Michigan against Purdue in Kentucky. Will be taking on Georgia. Kentucky, of course, the new number one after Syracuse lost for the first time at Notre Dame. Chance to see some of the talent that John Calipari has had there. So Thomas Robinson, his only field goal of this game coming at the 15, 59 mark. And look who's here. Bleeding Dodger Blue. Hall of Famer Tommy Lasorda dropped by and had a long conversation with Coach Bob Knight. They go way back. Tommy Lasorda won the Olympic gold medal with that baseball team, and Bobby sent you a jacket. <laughs> and you wear it religiously. 
not quite religiously, he sent me a jacket to take me away from the Cardinals, and that, that just couldn't happen. But uh, I had a great feel for Tommy and that Olympic championship team he put together and dropped him a note about it. Here comes Rutherford now dropping it into Robinson, who's been unable to get his offensive game going. So let's see what he comes up with here. Steps out and comes up over LeBoy. He's off to the right. No. And there's Harris dashing in front of the defensive rebound. Now Robinson is one of six here tonight, and that's a story. And not only is he one of six, he hasn't gotten to the free throw line. And and uh, they they just have played so much from the outside with their shooting Brent they've had about 16 outside attempts to score and haven't cashed in on their couple and that's not the way Kansas has to play they've got to go inside out rather than outside in that's a hell ball and it goes over to Kansas I'll tell you what's interesting underneath watching with me that time he intimidated several of the Aggies they couldn't pull the trigger because of that size and underneath. Well, when we said earlier he was slow going out uh, on the shot from the corner, but since then he has really gone after things, and you're going to see it here. Does a better job moving with it. He's right there. They get really good help there also. This was excellent team defense in the lane on that position. Now, as we come down to the final half minute of the first half, who would have thought this? The Jayhawks holding it up. Hawks are not quite balanced, but they're going to bring it down to around 10 seconds. They put Johnson on the basketball here. Tyshawn Taylor again is off the floor. Relaford off iron. Robinson for the rebound. Here comes Dash Harris with Elijah. Fake up right hand. Good for the lead. Aggies take the lead at the half. Look at how happy they are as they head off the floor. What a performance here. A 30-17 run after being down 11-0. Let's go to Hollywood, Coach Self. Well, Coach, you got out to that 11-0 run. What concerns you that maybe it was too easy early and they let up a little bit? Well, we played really dumb, and we didn't play very hard, and uh, uh, we played very selfish. So those are three bad things to play with uh, the first half. Hopefully we'll do better second. What was dumb that you can fix in the second half? Well, we could just try to do what we do. I mean, we, we've had a pretty decent run running our stuff, but we had a lot of guys go off on their individual, playing individual ball today. And Thomas didn't get many touches. What do you do to get him more involved? Well, he's one of the group. I mean, he's got to play better. Thanks, Coach. All right, Holly. Coach Self laying it on the line, and we will take a look at the basket by Dash Harris. This put the Aggies ahead. Now let's join Reese Davis, Hubert Davis, Digger Phelps with the UPS halftime report. Take it away, Reese. Brent, this thing looked like it was going to be a fanny paddling right out of the gate. And then all of a sudden, let's see, what was it? Uh, uh, dumb, soft? <laughs> not, I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, not hard enough. I know, but Bill Self did. Yeah, I'm not did. saying it either. He said it. When you, when you have a team that is going off script a little bit, playing a little selfishly, not running their stuff, as a player, how do you handle it? How do you change it at halftime? Well, Kansas offensively took a breath, and they started shooting poor shots, and they tried to throw the ball down low on a post, and Thomas Robinson, every time he touches the basketball, they're double teaming, so they have to have better spacing, and guys like Travis Relaford have to shoot the ball from three, put the ball on the floor, penetrate, distribute, and get to the free throw line. I think that's the biggest thing. When you're struggling to shoot the ball from the outside, you always want to put the ball on the floor and get to the free throw line. They averaged 23 free throws a game. They've only been to the line three times, so that says bad shot not aggressive dribble drive getting the ball in the paint but you got to credit uh, you know I look at A&M and, and you're down 11 nothing and you're at Kansas so what do you do well I thought Dash Harris was a leader I thought he's aggressive got the boards and that and, and that got Turner and, and LeBeau into the game and they got 15 points from that standpoint Kansas to me uh, at times the lack of leadership on the floor you can't have eight turnovers in the first half when you're at home you can't jump out 11 nothing without having something say wait a second 
They're making a run at us. And now you're down at halftime because of lack of hustle, lack of rebounding, lack of what? Getting the big guy, the ball inside. Thomas Robinson just disappeared, period. One for five, two points. So from that standpoint, if I'm Bill Self, I know what he's doing in that locker room right now. They are getting ripped. And if they got four minutes to come out with intensity and get this game back and get this lead back to double figures, that's and what they've got to do. And meanwhile, the Aggies doing it without Chris Middleton. They've been hoping to get him back yeah. and uh, doing it without one of their better offensive players and the Aggies have a 30-28 to 28 lead at halftime. Syracuse lost his first game of the season over the weekend, still on the road, lost to Notre Dame. Now at Cincinnati, Bearcats have been playing well. Right? Of course it's cash beer. <laughs> Five of nine from three. Cincinnati went up six. They threw in a lot of threes early, but James Sutherland got some run. Threw it in the fancy way, Hubert. So he's a guy that... Likes to shoot the ball from three, but he put the ball on the floor. But this is the guy that has to step up, and he did. At times, Chris Joseph, a versatile small forward, power forward that can put the ball on the floor and attack the rim. He had 17. Brandon Trish hit a three. He had 11, and Scoop Jardine finished with a three digger. Scoop Jardine did a great job. 13 points, big three here, and they shot 46% in this game after shooting 34% against the Irish on that loss on the weekend. 60 to 53, the final. We'll continue on Big Monday. Open up the court vision on Kentucky's big man when you come back. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Maybe this vacation wasn't a good idea. Vacations are always a good idea. No time. Out, quickly. You're miles from your destination. You'll need a hotel tonight. We don't have time to bid. You don't have to bid. At Priceline, you can choose from thousands of hotels on sale every day. Save yourself some money. It's what I would have wanted. You're watching the UPS Halftime Report. The Washington transfer, Elston Turner. Let me tell you something. His daddy could shoot it, too. Woo. Played at Ole Miss and in the NBA. Elston Jr. knocking it down. A&M up by a bucket on Kansas at the half. Latest coaches poll is out. Got a new number one team. Kentucky slides to the top. Wildcats only with a single loss. Missouri's right behind. Ohio State's third. And Syracuse, after losing on the road at Notre Dame, slips to number four. And you're watching the Jayhawks tonight at number five, but trailing by... A deuce at halftime. So as we open our eyes to the court vision, you better open your eyes and find Anthony Davis if you're <laughs> going to try to penetrate against Kentucky. He's been an instrumental part of their great defense. Well, well, Kentucky defensively, they have a lot of length and athleticism, and but they have also Anthony Davis guarding the paint. And what he does is great blocking shots, not only on the ball, but also weak side. So conventional wisdom in terms of offensively is try to get him away from the basket and involve him into pick and rolls. But I want to show you that doesn't even work against Anthony Davis. Here's a pick and roll situation earlier this year against Arkansas Little Rock. And you see Darius Miller go over the top, which is taking away that three. So it leaves that guard two options, either drive to the basket or the pull-up jump shot. But you can see Anthony Davis. He's not even worried about his man. He stays right there in the lane, and he gets the block shot and to get the ball out of bounds. I'm in convinced with Kentucky the only way to get Anthony Davis out of the lane is to be able to have a big guy that can score down low on a post and get him into foul trouble. Kentucky has lost one game. That's against Indiana. That was the one game that he was in foul trouble, and Cody Zeller was effective down low on the post. You know what I hope? I hope our buddy Bob Knight is watching you break down defense here at halftime. Woo! He's going to be impressed. Next week, it'll be sure. a pump fake. Is that it? <laughs> ball <laughs> fake. Michigan and Purdue. Ball, ball, ball fake. fake. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> Michigan and Purdue, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Kentucky and Georgia, you can see Anthony Davis swatting those shots away. 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Then on Wednesday night, you'll be able to see the new number two team, Missouri, and Ricardo Ratliff take on Oklahoma State. I know you love uh, Ricardo Ratliff for the Tigers. Well, Missouri's only loss was at Kansas State, and they really got beat up on the boards in that game. So what they've done to adjust, they've really gotten good offense, spreading the floor with four guards and going with Ricardo Ratliff inside, who can just destroy you, getting points in the paint, getting his double-doubles. Watch this high post pick right here. He comes up high, and this is what they do very, very well. When they spread the floor, they're all around. Now he goes, there he is down the lane, inside, layup. 
He was 11 for 14 against Baylor, 27 points. Same thing again. Spread the floor. Now they're gets two, two screens up high. He still goes, and there's the penetration because they go to the ball. He comes in and gets it done. When you look at Ratliff making things happen inside, getting points in the paint, that forces the defense to collapse. What that has done for Pressy and English and those guys playing that perimeter, now they step out and they can shoot the threes and let alone drive, penetrate, and transition. This is why, to me, Missouri has fought their way to be number two in the country. How about this? A couple of weeks, college game day. Ooh. Ooh. Good basketball. Ooh. Both teams. Thank you. <laughs> Kansas. Good basketball. Both teams. Kansas got a little business. Yeah, can we take care yeah, of business yeah, yeah. Tonight, Kansas? Got a little bit to do. Of course, you know, things could be much better for Towson. We'll see if they can break their losing streak when you come back. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Towson and Delaware. Towson have lost 39 consecutive games. Tigers hoping to turn things around against the Blue Hens. And that's did, one of 18 turnovers, which led to 17 points. They shoot 33%. Oh. And what's amazing, Delaware only shot 35%, and they still lose. Well, Pat Scary's in his first year there. He's trying to rebuild the entire program for Towson. They've lost 40 in a row. They were winless in the Colonial last year, and they're 0-21 overall this season, 62-43 to in the final as Delaware gets the win. How about this look? Oof. Travis Relliford. Hey, you know what? Travis Relliford making like his brother Trevor edition it off. Jeff Withy with the finish. We'll shout out to Trevor. 30-28, Texas A&M's up. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Welcome back to ESPN's Big Monday presented by Bud Light. We're at the Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas, where there's been a shock unfolding as Texas A&M takes a two-point lead, 30-28. So with Bob Knight, I'm Brett Musburger, and Coach, in talking to you during the intermission, you were very displeased with Kansas not feeding the ball into the post when they come down. Well, they took so many threes. Tehan, the first two times he touched the ball, threw up the shot. Johnson did the same thing, and I'm sure the coaches weren't happy with that. If I were starting the second half with Kansas, I'd say no shot is taken until the postman touches the ball. We're going to move the ball from side to side. We're going to work. We're going to go up and down in the post, but it's going to go inside. If our inside guys don't have a shot, back out, then we'll drive the ball, but not come down. Even that last possession they had resulted in a very poor three. Now, yeah, Coach, we may have a story unfolding here with Texas A&M. Let's go back now and take a look at Dash Harris. This is the last play of the half. Watch how he comes down on this play. And uh, Holly Rowe, uh, he uh, was not moving too well as he came out of the locker room after intermission. That's right, Brent. They're saying that he has got a sprained foot. Now, Dash has been telling the guys he's in a lot of pain. I asked Coach Kennedy, how does this affect you? He said he's going to try to play, but it really hurts us. We don't have another point guard on the roster. If he's not able to go here, guys, they'll have to rely on Elston Turnin, but it's not his natural position. And Dash Harris, guys, he had six rebounds in that first half. He was their big energy guy. He's having a tough time walking right here, Brent. He's just not even going. Look at that. See how he's limping, Harris? Yeah, he's not moving well at all. Now he comes out. They go inside and miss their first shot into Robinson's hands. And now let's see what the Jayhawks are going to do. You heard Coach Bill Self, if you were with us, at the end of the first half, he told Holly, team was selfish and not smart. There's Withy touching the ball out high. Robinson will rotate down low. Tyshawn penetrates, pulls the trigger, and there's a blocking foul on the Aggies. First half numbers look this way. And remember, the Aggies are playing without Chris Middleton tonight, who is out with an injury. So Elston Turner 
And as Reese told you, his daddy was a good NBA player, played for Dallas, Denver, and Chicago after coming out of Mississippi. And now Tyshawn Taylor with a chance to tie it. You know what they did with that drive, they got a chance to go to the free throw line. They'd taken so many shots in the first half that had no chance of getting them to the line. So that's a good move uh, for Kansas with its offense where they drew the free throw. You know, one thing I want to tell Reese, though, is, Reese, you got to be careful about thinking that Hubert has grasped defense. <laughs> that just didn't go happen. I knew that was not going to get by you. <laughs> Turner does feed the post the bow, and he'll step out with Withy on him. For a high pick and roll, takes it on the outside, up over with him. LeBeau knocks it down. Now, as LeBeau moves around, he can score in a variety of ways. And if he's going to have Withy come on him, he's going to be able to drive him and get to the free throw line. They've done a better job getting to the line than Kansas has. Here's Withy Lowe, whips it back to Johnson. Missing their first three of the second half and into Turner's hands. Now, see, Withy had plenty of room to make a little move to the middle and draw a foul right there. I mean, I, I'd want him to be very conscious about getting to the bucket. Bull whips it back outside to Harris. They load the block. Double team. Gives it up. Here's Hibbert. Back outside. Deep three off the iron and tracking it down now is Elijah Johnson. Bounce pass relative. Rolls. That's what Self is looking for. Johnson made a great move in the middle. He held up at the top of the key and let Relford get in front of him so it was an automatic basket. That's the best play that Kansas has had in the game. Davis steps out. Here's Harris now. LeBeau has Withy on him. They kick it in. LeBeau now is triple team. And we'll try to get it out. It's out of bounds with nine on the shot. Aggie basketball. Right here. Watch him pull up just a little bit. He let the offensive man get in front of him. Relford in that case made a good pass. Really good timing. Johnson. Elston Turner puts it down and he's on the free throw line. And Elston Turner played out at Washington before transferring by back down to the Aggies growing up in the in the state of Texas and so he's a tough hombre. You heard Holly say that if they're forced to replace Harris at the point. Here's the young man who will handle the ball for him coming up. I believe he's the son of an Elston Turner senior who played for one of my former assistants and an extremely good coach Bobby Weltlich at Ole Miss. Turner being one of the better players in the history of basketball at Ole Miss under Bobby Weltlich. You're exactly right. Tough kid. Smart kid. Deadlocked. Let me say that the Aggies scored on that free throw. Finishing is Robinson. A really good screen there. Made a situation. Two offensive players with one defensive player between them. And a great move to the bucket. Again. They tried to do something inside rather than settling for something outside. But well, now we are deadlocked at 33. We got the score straight now. 17 minutes left here in regulation. LeBeau is out high. Turner double pulls it, jumps it to LeBeau. What a beautiful pass. Even though Turner appeared to be open, he saw that sitting right underneath the basket was his teammate LeBeau. And so. Turner gave you an indication of somebody who can certainly run the floor with a pass like that. Not that he's a guy that sees the floor. Not many guys would have seen that open man. You made a great comment about that, Brent, because that was an extraordinary situation for him to see the open man inside as he did. Always know what's going on. Vision, vision. See the floor, see the court, see who's open. And meanwhile, the Aggies with a bad turnover. Hibber was trying to load Davis and they whistle the ball out of bounds. 
I don't like walking the ball up the floor because that takes something out of the enthusiasm and the tension and play and get it up as quickly as you can and, and really everything be quick movement rather than taking your time kind of fooling around with the ball bringing it up. I think that sets a bad tone for the offensive possession. Keith Davis away from the basketball picks up a personal foul here. Relaford over to the corner and Taylor. Taylor drains the three. The Jayhawks with a lead. Now this is where when we were doing the Missouri game where Missouri just took total control of it. A&M's got to have a little patience. Take a little time, make sure that they're still in the ball game with the shot selection, or it'll get away from it. And there goes a foul against the Jayhawks. Relaford. We're going to take a break. There were a couple of wake up moments. The first one, Thomas Robinson. And then Tyshawn Taylor. point game and there's a former Jayhawk star Marcus Morris now playing with Houston had a little bit of a sprained ankle and it's interesting you know his twin brother was born seven minutes earlier Markeith and uh, Markeith was drafted five minutes early <laughs> went to, and then Markeith went to Phoenix and then of course Houston selected Marcus Morris and uh, we had some great times with the twins when they were here in Lawrence. So 15-23 to go now, and it's a 36-35 one-point Jayhawk lead. Turner penetrates with the dribble, picks it up, gives it up again. And Robinson with a great defensive play this time. LeBeau against three, has a stolen strip. And Withy came away with the ball, and here is Taylor. Great team D on the Jayhawks. Taylor made a great offensive move right there by backing the ball back out rather than trying to force something that wasn't there. Miss another three, and it's Turner rotating in for the rebound. Elston Turner, he now has five rebounds, and he's left alone. Knocks down the three ball. Elston Turner. See, that's Tehan taking a three the first time he touched the ball coming in the game. That just really uh, throws a monkey wrench into the offensive play, I think. Here's Robinson with a quick step into the post. On the line, he'll shoot a pair. And if you take a look at Thomas Robinson, this is the first time he's gotten to the free throw line tonight. Well, one of the reasons it's the first time he's gotten the free throw line is they've kind of ignored their inside play, and that's an extremely unusual thing for Kansas. They've always been among the better inside play teams in the country, and right now they've got two guys in there, Withy and Robinson, if they get the ball and if they're moving. They go to the bucket. They're going to shoot 25 free throws between them in the second half. Five points for Robinson. Harris is uh, going to limp off. And Kinsley, Zach Kinsley, will come in. So Harris gamely tried it here. And he's going over to the Aggie bench to sit down. And we just wonder how much, if anything, he has left to give. Dash Harris has played a whale of a game. He played strongly against Oklahoma in that overtime win. College Station over the weekend. So here comes Kinsley and Hibbert weaving out high. When you've got the three perimeter players working like they are, that's a walk. Good call. Official looking at the feet. When you've got the three guys outside working, then your two inside guys can't be standing watching. You've got to have a high-low situation where you're screening, you're cutting, you're moving. The perimeter people, it's up to them to see that guy when he does get open. Coach Kennedy just told John Higgins, let's call that traveling call both ways. Don't forget it down at the other end. Taylor loads with you, kicks it back out to Tehan. Here's Robinson. Robinson's quick move, and he's back on that free throw line. 
See, that's that's the game for Kansas right there. The game for Kansas is to reverse it, get it inside, get a little screening inside, watch the ball. Now, look at that great position that Robinson has, and they're way, way too late coming back in to help. So you can see how hard he has worked on his game. He and Withy will shoot free throws for the next 14 minutes if Kansas goes inside with the ball and if they move with the ball once they get it. Withy's got to come up the lane a little bit. He's too deep on the lane because he can't go both ways from where he is. So the Jayhawks. Lead it 40 38, 13 44 to go. No need to foul, Kansas. No need to foul out on the floor. Just maintain body position. Make them hustle to get something. Without Harris, Turner, Davis, now the shot clock's down to five. Looking for a table setter against the shot clock and a violation. Now that was a, that was Kansas' best defensive possession of the game so far. Nobody reached, nobody grabbed. They made them play the whole 30 seconds or 35 seconds out without a chance to score. Now Dash Harris is going to check back in and try it again. We'll take a break with the Jayhawks ahead. Jayhawks lead the Aggies by two, and it was quite a week for the Big 12, especially Missouri. Following up with some big wins, they went into Baylor, one on the road, and Ricardo Ratliff was the Big 12 Player of the Week for his performance, 27 points. And there are four Big 12 teams in the top 25 now, and Note how many are in the top 10 Missouri Kansas and Baylor and let us not overlook Iowa State and the job that Fred Hoiberg is doing as a coach over there Royce White who transferred from Minnesota leads the surging Iowa State team first four and two Big 12 start in years and it's so nice to see up there great basketball fans over in that part of Iowa. Taylor pulls up after the timeout off iron. And Dash Harris back on the floor sealed up Robinson and did not allow the big man to get to it. It'll be Aggie basketball. And that is not what Bill Self wanted done after that timeout. There again, offense without anybody inside touching the ball. No chance to get to the free throw line. I think Self is going to have cardiac before this game is over because of what's been going on out here with their offense. Turner picks it up, saves it. Davis steps out. Gives it back now. Dash Harris, gamely hanging in. Playing with that injury, trying to set the table. He's got the shot at eight, working against it. Here comes Turner, penetrates, kicks over to the right, out of bounds. And it goes over. Ray Turner couldn't hang on, and that's the 11th Aggie turnover. Well, that's the kind of defense Kansas can play. And when you can play defense like that, you've got to do it. Now, at this end, they've got to have movement. They've got to get people going. This zone had them standing around a little bit. Now, they're not in zone this time. But they're still kind of in a sloughing man-to-man. -man. Robinson turned it over. Kinsley, now he thinks second about it, goes in, didn't get the foul call. Stripped in underneath, but Turner comes away with it. Elston on the dribble and he is fouled by Taylor. Taylor out high committed the personal foul. The Jayhawks in a war they did not expect here tonight. Unlike the stock exchange you can trade on inside information in college basketball and an assistant by the name of Kyle Keller was on Bill self staff a year ago and now he has joined Billy Kennedy there is Kyle right now and so he brings a lot of understanding Holly to what the Jayhawks are trying to do and to their talent. That's right. You know, every single game, a different assistant coach is always assigned the scout. 
so he goes out and has to walk through and tell everybody what the opponents are going to do. Well, he's been here on the Kansas staff, so he knew exactly how to attack this Jayhawk team. He did a great job in their scout today, and, you know, he used to sleep on Bill Self's couch when Bill and Cindy first got married, so they go back a long, long time. He knows what Bill Self is thinking. And they played together at Oklahoma State. Is that right, Holly? They were, they were friends there at Oklahoma State, yes. So it's Jayhawk basketball, and uh, the Aggies didn't get it done after that timeout. And here's Robinson back outside now to Taylor, 11 and a half minutes, and a pushing foul is called. See, just the idea of the drive drew a foul. He made a move, little move, and then drove the ball, and the defense was beaten by a step, but now they're one closer to the one and one or the two shot foul. AM lost the possession to start after that timeout, Brent, by moving on a set inbound situation. The man with the ball took two steps. He's in a set spot. He can't move on that inbounds. And obviously something that uh, they did not go over in that huddle and remind the youngsters of that. And on the drive, Taylor is nicked. And just what you said about trying to penetrate, trying to get it inside, Turner found him. They move inside, they drive like they are. They're a little quicker outside in a couple of spots they've got good drivers either they're going to get fouled or the defensive man on the post is going to move to help and then they're going to get some inside close shots sixth foul on the Aggies here in the second half Robinson cut off baseline the bow now he's triple team got to try to get it back on the outside the timeout is called by the Jayhawks really important when the ball goes inside like we're going to see here I think Pass goes into the post man and the help comes right to it as soon as he gets the ball he's got to recognize help and get it back out of there he's not going to be able to play against four people like they have set up there that's the postman's fault for not recognizing Robinson's too experienced not to see the help and then get it back outside. Well, a reminder that uh, Super Tuesday tomorrow night features the Big Ten of the SEC first at 7 Eastern the Michigan Wolverines visit Purdue. Then at 9 Eastern Kentucky takes on Georgia. Bob give me a little rundown on uh, on Purdue what their season has been like. Well I think we were talking earlier about those five or six teams in the middle of the Big Ten and they've all kind of traded wins and losses back and forth and I don't think anybody has jumped to the forefront you know even Ohio State uh, has lost a couple of games and I think they from the standpoint of what they've got back and what they should be are you know a little bit better than anybody else but uh, not a lot of really tough strength in the Big Ten. Back to Rutherford. The pull up Jay is good from the free throw line and it's 42 38 now at the 11 minute mark and the Aggies have got to be careful. Now, I really thought Relaford was looking inside. He dribbled it three times. I thought he had his attention inside. And when he had the room, he pulled up with an open 15-foot shot. There was a good play by Relaford. Daniel Alexander back on the floor, and Elston Turner knocks down a big hoop. Oh, did they need that? Well, Taylor had a chance to help there, and all he did was wave. If he takes one more step further and shuts off the drive, they don't get that bucket. They load Robinson, turn it over into Alexander's hands. Here come the Aggies. They can tie at this trip or take a lead. Sometime the postman has to step toward the ball. Robinson waited for that ball to get to him, and he needed to feel the pressure on his upside and make that step shutting him out like a blockout, and he'd have gotten the pass. Harris, gamely carrying on. Shot clock coming down to 10 now. Alexander right side misses from the baseline but it was a good move. Now it's Taylor bringing it back for the Jayhawks. Robinson puts it on the floor. Luthie couldn't rebound it. Loose ball goes down out of bounds. Kansas. Now that showed Robinson right there with that quickness and that size. It indicates to me that Robinson could flash up to that high post every once in a while, get the ball, offense stays spread, Robinson little foot fake, and then drive to the bucket and go to the free throw line. Davis will replace Alexander. They're coaching Alexander up on the sideline with a couple of big hoops in the first half.
This is good patience they have right here. Rutherford at the free throw line. Aggie basketball and again a chance to tie or take the lead and there's the gutty warrior Harris bringing it down to the attack. They've done a good job using the floor, being patient. Now they're inside of 10 on the shot. Hibbert loses the ball. Dive for it on the floor, and it'll go over to Kansas on the possession arrow. They've got to look for LeBeau in here. They've got to get LeBeau some screens. They've got to get him really involved in the offense if they're going to be able to take this down to the wire. So Elijah Johnson checks back in. Excuse me, Bob, and he is 0 for 6, having missed six three balls. But he's back on the floor, handling the ball right now. Kansas is kind of standing more than I remember them standing. They they have uh, give up the ball and then just kind of stand and watch. Robinson back on the free throw line. Davis fouled him. Now this is the third time in this half that he's gone to the free throw line after a drive, Brent. That's the thing. Postman steps out, gets it, faces, drives, and he's going to go to the free throw line more than anything else. We didn't see that in the first half. Going to bring Daniel Alexander in after this first free throw. Nine points for Robinson here tonight. And the little change that they've had in what they're doing and offensively, he hits this one. That's six free throws he's made this half because the ball's gone inside. And as a result, the Jayhawks lead it by four here. 8.29 remaining. In underneath, LeBeau is being pushed. And it's on Wesley, Justin Wesley, trying not to give LeBeau position. I always thought there was a thing called an unnecessary foul. You don't need to foul away from the ball. You don't need to hold on to somebody because they just get that much closer to the one and one or the two shot. Here's Elston Turner bumping, turning on Relaford, front of iron, battle for the rebound, Alexander, and an elbow is thrown. It's going to be against Robinson, I believe. An elbow came out, fired it out. We'll take a look at this. Self looking back at his bench is going to bring Withy back. Well, Wesley made a great, great help out defensive move there, shutting off the drive. And there really wasn't any sense for Robinson to react like he did. The officials uh, are the taking a look at this. Watch this now. Alexander was battling him. Yeah, I don't think they can get anything out of that other no. than a foul. He was just clearing space. Yeah, he was trying to get it. some space and yeah. he didn't have it. I didn't think it was. Uh... And it was a down in the in the midsection area stomach. And I think the guy was just trying to move. Defense did a really good job crowding it. Alexander may have contacted him first on the back when they were battling for the rebound. So but he did he did clear it with the elbow. I don't have any question about that. But like you said, I think they missed the call in the first place. I, I think that uh, that Robinson got pushed pretty good here. Prior to his attempt to pivot out and sit right, right there. Now you can see this right now. The contact, right there, you can see. So John Higgins, David Hall, and Tom Eads are over taking a look at the monitor. Well, I think you've got to see that Robinson got fouled in the first place. So it should be Aggie 
Aggie basketball should be the result of this as you look at it. Uh, Holly, is that what you heard over there? Yeah, John Higgins told Bill Self immediately, hey, we had to call it, but it's just an offensive foul. Didn't make contact to the head, guys. Right. So Aggie basketball inbounds to Alexander. Ian Turner represents some firepower now with Harris slowed by that injured foot that he suffered on the last play of the first half. There's Alexander and Wesley's with him and the youngster loses control. Out of bounds, Jayhawk basketball. We'll take a break. That's the second good defensive play that Wesley's made since coming into the ball game. Really good. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And in part by Farmers Insurance. Visit Farmers.com to find an agent. We are insurance. We are farmers. Next time, try a Subway Turkey BLT or a Fresh Fit Turkey Melt. Merely seven grams of fat each. Subway. Eat fresh. Reese Davis with you. Sports Center right now brought to you by Sprint. Joe Paterno's funeral has been scheduled for Wednesday. The family says it will be a private affair. There will be a public memorial at the Jordan Center on Thursday. Sports Center coming after the game. All right, Reese, and here are the Jayhawks. With a four point lead and 753 remaining in the second half, 44 to 40. And uh, Bob, uh, this is what you think Thomas Robinson should continue doing. I think that as he gets the ball here, look to go to the bucket with it. They've got some help, but he breaks the help, draws the foul. And in addition to that, right now Kansas has taken 18 threes and made four. That should be like four out of ten. For canvas now, which gives them eight other possessions to draw a foul, get the bucket. The three point shot has been a real bad thing for him. Robinson watching right now. Battle for the rebound. Dash Harris covers it up, and the possession arrow will favor the Aggies. Tough little hombre playing through a foot injury that he suffered on the last play of the first half. Now we want to take you back in case you just joined us. This gave the Aggies the lead at the intermission. Coming down awkwardly on the foot. And he has been playing through some pain here in the second half. And the Jayhawks set up a little full court press. They did a good job setting it up and getting back from it because they don't want to foul 50, 60 feet from the basket. They Got out of that very well, Kansas did. LeBeau has been bottled up pretty much here as of late. Withy now, one on one, they load LeBeau. He'll back it down, goes to the left hand, a beautiful move. Really a good move, but again, that help wasn't there. He was able to split the defense, and you just can't allow that to happen inside. I was really surprised that Kansas came out and took another three to make it four for 19. Now this is where they're going to win the game. And one. Good fake to the inside. Quick spin back strong enough to go through the foul and make the bucket. Middle fake back strong. If he had about 12 of those threes they've shot <laughs> inside instead of guys throwing up threes this game wouldn't be a contest and the Jayhawks now with a five point lead huge offensive set here for the Aggies they do not want to lose contact at this point LeBeau up high, can't knock it down into Withy's hands, and here come the Jayhawks. Same spot. Same result. Go to the free throw line. David LeBeau, third personal foul. 
That's three on LeBeau and uh, Holly Robinson. They're working on shooting free throws too, hasn't he? That's right. In Big 12 play, their last six games, he's shooting 46% from the line. His coach, Danny Manning, was teasing him at practice. Man, your free throws are on life support, dude. He said, Coach, the more I've been practicing, the worse they're getting. So now tonight, though, guys, he has hit his last six in a row. So whatever he changed, it's better. It's off life support tonight, right? Absolutely. No. At this point, that first one is so important because it gives you a chance at two. And you make that first one, it gives him a little bit more confidence, maybe on the second one, because he's hit three twos in a row. This would be four in the second half. Perfect at the free throw line tonight. Good coaching by Man of Peace. <laughs> and I believe Kennedy wanted a timeout. Now, if Kansas, if, if their perimeter players just understand that they've gone from little behind and even to seven ahead because of what Robinson's been able to do inside and the fact that they've gotten Robinson the ball. Wednesday night, I'm going to ask you about your road trip here. Villanova, Louisville will kick it off. Duke will take on Maryland, and you will see Coach Turgeon, the former Aggie coach, now up there with Maryland. So you will. Get to see the ACC and Duke, of course, coming off of that tough loss at home. It snapped their 45 game home winning streak. It's kind of interested in going to Maryland in, in the old Cole Field House. I think that's the only time I was ever at Maryland for a game when I was coaching at West Point and we played them in, uh, I think, the first year that uh, Drizel was there and we were able to beat them in uh, Cole Field House. And I think that's the only time I've ever been on a Maryland campus. There's a nice facility in there now. You'll enjoy that. So the inbounds is to Davis. Down by seven, looking for a hope. And a foul called against the Jayhawks. That's four personals on Taylor. Just, just not a smart move. You've got the ball pinned uh, 45 feet from the basket. Make them do something. Don't, don't. Give them something to do. Make them do it. Good job of keeping the ball out of way. Kansas is doing a really good job here now, albeit giving up that foul. Turner and blocked by Whitty. Jeff Whitty with another block. Robinson wants it. Johnson keeps it. And the pull up Jay. I see Johnson was looking for Robinson all the way. I think Robinson got hurt inside. Robinson was looking to get open. There's something wrong with his leg. Got an injury. And a huge three by Elston Turner. But that time when when Johnson came in with the ball he was looking for Robinson all the way and he had that wide open 15 footer that's fine. Wheel to the middle. Running hook is good. Well the big guys have stepped up here in the second half. Austin throws it up, tap back the bow, no. Threw it off by Rutherford, and the Jayhawks are in command. Looking for a double digit lead here. Turned around by Robinson and Withy. There's Withy open again. Move quick. And foul by LeBeau. Every time they've gotten the ball into the low post, it's been worth points. I think that uh, Robinson's gotten eight off free throws. And, and three other buckets and with with he's got another bucket and you've mentioned what a good free throw shooter he is. They did a great job going from kind of helter skelter offense to OK we're going to go inside our post guys are going to score or they're going to go to the line. Well let's look at it this way. I think the two big men are perfect. They put 12 points up with the free throws and uh, you could argue that that's the difference in this game is putting Robinson and Withy at the free throw line here.
You don't those, see many seven footers with a stroke like he's got. Oh, he's, the got line. He, he's like a guy that has a great putting stroke. Exactly. Soft, easy. It's very soft. Well, you're right about the free throw points. Plus, then you add about five buckets to that also. Exactly. Up by double digits now with 424 to go. And it's Rutherford with the foul. Never reach. Play defense with everything from your shoulders straight down. Just keep your arms out, but don't try and make the steal under pressure. Can't say enough about it. And the little guy over there, Dash Harris, played through some pain on that injured foot, and obviously it has really affected him. He's about 50% of what we saw in the first half. Elston Turner stepping up. He's got 17 here tonight. I'll give him 18, carrying the load. The thing you worry about with Harris, though, is this plan him now is that going to keep him out for a couple of weeks after this you always got to be careful about an injury that kid, kid always wants to come back and say coach i can play i'm all right i can play so you got to be careful that it doesn't cost a couple more games because you're putting back in on an injury johnson will bring it down it's going to be zone defense now but there still is not going to hurt Kansas at all getting the ball inside. They missed Robinson there. Once Robinson and Withy Bob learn how to pass it to each other down low, they're going to be unstoppable. Down there. This is three tap back. No Robinson comes flat and one. That's his best offensive rebound of the night. That was a big time offensive rebound. Tommy Lasorda appreciated that move. But you know, Whiffy set that up by keeping the ball alive. We'll see that here, I think. Here's the shot. Watch Whiffy. Keeps it alive, and Robinson is right there. Great job by Whiffy. Yeah, absolutely. What's up, Stuart Scott with you coming up on SportsCenter after the game. No longer number one. See if Syracuse fell further against Cincinnati. Why it's about more than just revenge for Tom Brady against the Giants. And we celebrate National Handwriting Day on ESPN. SportsCenter after the game. Reese Davis with you in the studio. Reminder over on ESPN2, we're in the quarterfinal round of the Australian Open. Top seed on the women's side, Caroline Wozniacki taking on the reigning champion in Australia, Kim Kleisters. Early on, you can see it over on ESPN2. All right, Reese. Lori McElroy's significant other for the time being. Huh? So she's still alive. And uh, there are the, um, the two big men, Bob, and uh, as you say, the reason for the Jayhawks being ahead right now. I think going to the two of them inside and the way they've played inside has been the whole difference in the ball game. Completely different from their first half offense. Now again, you want to make, maintain pressure, keep your hands out of the play, don't put them on the free throw line. And Johnson chasing over here against Turner. Uh, now, see, that's a foul committed 30 feet away from the bucket. It had absolutely nothing to do with stopping the score. That's the thing that would drive a coach nuts, you know. Bill Stone there said, what in the world is he thinking about? And we need to say something about this Turner kid, Brent. He has done a great job in this game. He has been a very, very good basketball player here tonight. That's a 20 point night for him, Well, that plus his defense. He's just a tough kid. His daddy would be proud of him. Well, his dad was a really good player. Back down to a single digit. Still 3.30 to go here. One thing I've noticed about the Aggies in these two games that we've had, just like the football team, they don't quit. Things are going against them, and they will battle. 
they hang in there really well, except, except for it. except for the top teams like maybe Kansas and Missouri. Uh, a and M is going to be as good as anybody. Absolutely. Johnson loads Robinson. Five on the shot. There it is to Withy. Didn't get it down, but that's that little inside pass between the two of them. Robinson really Withy said my fault as he came back down. He had a gimme there. Yeah, he did have, and that was a really good look by Robinson, although he didn't have much room on the baseline. Taylor is up, and he'll be checking back in for the close of this one. Turner pump fake feeds LeBeau with he's done a great job on the ball. Oh, got him again. Come back, got him again. Got him twice underneath. Wow. What a defensive performance by Jeff Withy that time. Eight block shots on this game for Jeff Withy. Eight blocks. Well, they don't want to slow it down. They, they want to keep really working hard with it. Fast movement, get into the gaps, and then eventually take advantage of what you have. Now Robinson's got to get it out on that double team. A good out pass. They're still got plenty of time. And Tom Davis underneath against Whippy. When you move inside, particularly in a situation like this, a couple minutes left to play, nine-point differential, you're going to draw a foul, and that's exactly what they do here. It's been a block party for the transfer from Arizona, raised in San Diego. And I'll tell you, when you talk about the most improved players in the country, remember Jeff Withy. He only played at just a few minutes last year. If at that, that's his first missed free throw of the night. He hit his first five, and uh, Robinson is nine of nine at the line. But this is a young man who has really come along. You know, you mentioned, and. Uh, and very rightly so, uh, when you talk about improved players in the country, I think you can add another adjective too, and that's effective players. I mean, he has become a very effective player at both ends. You know, coaches who play Kansas, you got a game plan for him now. You got to worry about him. He's a factor. He has made himself a factor. And when they get the situation where those two guys are screen, see when you put the screen into two man post play then you put the defense in a little bit of a quandary should they switch should they stay with what they are uh, you can set the screen and then a cutter can go high or low there's just a lot of things that can be done with two guys that are that effective inside uh, with one screening for the other well, let's hear it for Dash Harris tonight huh he's still hanging in there. Hasn't been able to penetrate, hasn't been able to flash for those defensive rebounds like he did in the first half. And he's gamely carrying on here. Elston breaks free, giving 23 on the night. And they're still alive with Middleton missing because he re injured the knee. Played only 12 minutes in that overtime win against Oklahoma. Boy, oh, A&M has really hung in here right right from the very beginning. This has been a real uh, real trivial to their moves off the great move off the dribble. Turner was very effective there, very effective. Same thing there. Backed off the dribble, stepped back, got set up really well. All right, now here we're going to see. Looks in, reverses the ball. Good back away move. Uh, Turner has taken very good shots. He set up his shot where he's not under pressure coming with the basketball. Dribble in, pop back. He's been very good with it in the second half. So a career high and 16 of his 24 have come this half. So Elston Turner Jr. Transferred to the Aggies from the University of Washington in Seattle. 147 remaining. It's a seven point game right now. Full court pressed by the Aggies. They turn it over. And it's tied up as Taylor goes back after it. And they've got it on the held ball arrow. Wow, the Aggies had a golden opportunity. And they couldn't come away with it. Kansas a little bit careless right here. You'll see the pass. Doesn't need to really be, it should have been handled better than that. He should have stepped toward the ball a little bit. 
uh, more than he did and he knows that Taylor's out there kind of hitting his hands as though I should have had that pass to begin with. Again everything's in Kansas favor. They've got 35 seconds to run this down to a minute left and in the process they should be able to get to the free throw line. Taylor over to Robinson. No need to force it. Take seconds off the clock rather than get a quick shot now. You bring it down inside of 10. With you come high. Taylor drives for the layup and makes it. That's the kind of athletic ability I think we were talking about and Coach Self has talked about with Taylor. He came in, spun away from the defense, got completely open. The Jayhawks are going to remain unbeaten at home, but this one was not easy. Robinson, another double-double for Robinson. His 10th rebound of the night. Well, the way Kansas changed its offense in the last 10 minutes of the half for the second 10 minutes, there's a whole difference in this ball game, Brent. We haven't even seen a lot happen from the outside uh, scoring potential of Kansas. It's been a tremendous uh, offensive show by Robinson and, and with the inside, plus those guys that got them the ball. that just as soon as we finish Sports Center is next. Obviously they'll be talking about the upcoming Super Bowl in Indianapolis. What a great matchup huh? New England the Giants. What do you like in that one folks. Well how about uh, you coach Knight? you were uh, <laughs> you were right about uh, the Patriots getting through this week. Well I uh, I knew the Patriots coach's dad before the Patriots coach ever was a coach Steve Belichick and uh, I've had kind of a family uh, friendship with them for a long time so that's uh, that's where my sentiments will be. It's going to be a tough game let me tell you Eli Manning goes into the stadium where his brother Peyton has been a star through the years. The Giants who will forget four years ago when they Stop New England's unbeaten season. Payback for Tom Brady? Well, we'll see about that. Johnson knocks down a free throw, and the number five team will move along. You know, I think that payback thing is so overrated, it isn't even funny. I mean, what do they care about a game four years ago? They got a lot of different players. My guess is that you're wrong about Brady. My guess is he does care oh, about oh, that. Oh, I know that, but I mean, overall, I, I, it's going to depend on how well they play. No I, question. I, no question. I just have never, uh, never much of a believer in all those voodoo things. Well, voodoo works with Brady. When he gets upset, <laughs> he's pretty good. <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather have him thinking about beating this team than losing to him before. <laughs> So for the fifth time, the Jayhawks go 7-0 to start the Big 12 season. Another fine performance, but it was not easy. Thomas Robinson and Jeff Withy lead the comeback here in the second half. Up next, Sports Center. I'm Brett Musburger, and for Bob Knight, Holly Rowe, and our entire crew, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long, folks, from Lawrence, Kansas. The Jayhawks stay unbeaten at home. After losing the run at perfection, see if Q's bounce back Monday night against Cincinnati. The NBA's best in action. You've got to see if the Bulls continued their stampede. And don't miss how the Thunder kept rolling at home. Ready to battle on football's biggest stage? Tom Brady versus Eli Manning. Both QBs talk Super Bowl. One makes a vow. And in celebration of...